one of the biggest challenges of going low carb is to have really good pizza. Now, if you go online and start looking at Pinterest, you're going to see literally hundreds of pizza crust recipes made with cauliflower, pork rinds, almond flour, and even the very famous fathead pizza dough, which uses a combination of almond flour, melted mozzarella cheese, and cream cheese. Well, we have a nut-free pizza crust that I really think is actually a little bit better than fathead pizza and a whole lot easier. Let me show you what I've come up with. It's super, super simple. We're gonna start with a half cup of whey protein isolate. Now, I said whey protein isolate. I remember I used this because the isolate has the casein and the lactose removed, so it's lower carbohydrate. I have a couple of brands I prefer. Um, Hoosier Farms is great, and Isopure is really my favorite. That's what I'm using today. So Isopure is zero carb, and it doesn't have the sweeteners that are often added to unflavored protein powders. Um, J. Rob is another excellent brand. Just be careful with whatever you get, that the ingredients are fairly clean, and you want whey protein isolate. Okay, half cup of, and that is Isopure, unflavored. You're dealing with unflavored this time. To that, I'm going to add two ounces of cream cheese. Really simple. So while this is nut free, it isn't dairy free. We're also going to add three ounces of shredded mozzarella cheese. And you know that if you shred your own, you can often avoid the food starches that are added to the packaged cheeses. And this is Parmesan cheese, three ounces of Parmesan cheese grated. So three ounces mozzarella, three ounces Parmesan. Notice I'm not putting anything in the microwave or the stovetop to melt it. We're just mixing it all together. And in fact, I don't even need to mix it now. Let me throw the other ingredients in. These are all seasonings. I have a half teaspoon of granulated garlic. This is garlic powder. Um, if you don't like garlic, you can certainly use less. I love this stuff. Um, this is a half teaspoon of baking powder. Remember the difference between baking powder and baking soda. Baking soda needs a, an acid to activate it. So this is baking powder and you wanna get an aluminum free if you're careful with ingredients. This is one half teaspoon of salt. And the cheeses can make it salty, so if you're using a saltier cheese, you might wanna leave that until the end and taste the dough before you add the salt. This is a half teaspoon of Italian seasoning. I probably would add a full teaspoon if I was making it for my family, but not everybody loves those flavors. I'm going to add two tablespoons of olive oil, and that's it, oh, one egg. <laughs> that's it, so one large egg. And my cream cheese has been sitting at room temperature. I did that so that it would soften, um, and so it does mix a little more easily when you do that. Now, I have made this pizza start to finish in 30 minutes, and that is faster than delivery around my house. Um, I'm taking a little longer because I'm talking, but this is something that I th really think you could easily make on a work or school night. We always look for fast at my house on a weeknight. Um, it also is simple enough that you could make a couple batches at a time and you can freeze the crust to use for future use. Now this crust, I'm gonna try to describe it to you. It's bread-like. It can seem a little dry if you're eating it without any sauce, um, but once you put your sauce on there, it, um, it's really delicious. I think you can make breadsticks with it and you can actually pick it up. So I am excited about, I have to just admit, there are a few recipes I get excited about. This crust is one of them because it's so difficult to make a really yummy low carb crust. I mean, let's face it, there wouldn't be hundreds of recipes out on Google and Pinterest if there was one that was really, really perfect, right? So I think the fact that there are so many variations is that nobody's really found one they really, really love. This crust is actually special enough that I've invited a special guest to come a little later on and try out this pizza crust. And I think you might recognize him a little later when he comes to join me. Okay, our dough is done, it's come together, and you can see it's in a ball. So what you can do now is you could put this on a round pizza stone. Now I always use parchment paper because it is, the dough's a little sticky. And so you could bake it as one round pizza. For this recipe, I usually get one 11 inch pizza. It bakes up to about 12 inches in diameter. But what I'm going to do, because I don't know about your family, but my family, everybody has a different favorite pizza topping. So I'm gonna portion this into four. 
So I'll put a dollop of dough there. I'll put another fourth of dough there. I'll do another half of the half here. And generally what happens if I've divided it evenly, I am able to do four five inch rounds. Now they're five inches in diameter when I smooth them out. And then they're about six inches in diameter after they bake. I'll add some more to that guy. And notice I'm not really having to get my fingers in here. I did that just to clean the spoon. But this whole recipe you can make just by using the back of the spoon. I'm using a wooden spoon. You could use a spatula. I'm giving you that diameter, the five inches in diameter, as a general guide so you'll know how flat to make it. Um, you obviously, most people aren't going to measure, but people will ask me how thick it should be. It's really a little more than a quarter inch thick. And if you're following me in centimeters, I can't help you. I'm so sorry. So then we'll do the second one. I often make a rectangular pizza. Um, and then I just separate toppings. So for example, my husband and I really love bell pepper. And so I'll put a long strip of bell pepper and that's kind of a dividing line between our toppings. He likes jalapenos, so I'll put jalapenos on his side. And then on my side, I like a lot of Italian sausage, so I'll put more Italian sausage. Another thing I like about smoothing these out into four rounds is that there is some portion control. And we're gonna put these in the oven at 350 degrees. And the smaller ones, are gonna bake for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now I'm not putting toppings on them, I'm putting them in just as they are. Once they get nice and brown, you pull them out, put your toppings on, put them back in, and you know, keep in mind that how long they're gonna bake for that second time once you put the toppings on, it's gonna depend on how much, or how many toppings you put. So like for my pizza, I love to put the pepperoni and the sausage and the onion and the bell pepper and lots of mozzarella. So it might take 10, 12 minutes for my pizza to be done. Somebody like my son, Jonathan, who only wants cheese, we could sprinkle some tomato or put some tomato sauce, sprinkle the cheese on top, put it in the oven and his is probably gonna be done in five to seven minutes. So that second bake time, just keep an eye on it because it's gonna vary by toppings and your taste. Now, this is done. Um, these four are all pretty much the same size. They're about five inches in diameter. They'll bake out to be about six. And so let's put them in the oven and then we'll see what we have. So we have all of our pizza toppings ready, and as I mentioned before, we have a special guest helping us make dinner um, to try out the new crust that I've been making. You got the hey. crust ready? Hi. We're so excited to have Dr. Eric Westman here helping make pizza. So what do you think of the dough so far? Well, it looks great and it smells great. It smells good. Can we give it a try? We can, but we've got work to do. So we've got to make the pizza first. Okay. Okay. Have you ever made a pizza before? Not like this. <laughs> yeah. This is different. And if you've tried, you've tried a lot of low-carb pizzas, I'm sure. Tried the different kinds of crusts with pork fat rinds, head, the pork fat rinds. heads, uh, chicken. All, yeah. How, how is this one made? You know, this is very different. And I can tell you about it as kind of get started. I'm going to put some tomato sauce on it. But this one's kind of different. What I love about this is it's very low carbohydrate. It actually uses whey protein isolate. And now what I understand is that whey protein isolate is a really good option because the isolate has the casein and the lactose removed. Is, are you familiar with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so whey protein isolate, and I use um, a brand called um, Isopure. So it's zero total carbohydrate in the, yeah. in the protein, um, excuse me, in the protein powder, the whey protein isolate. It also has mozzarella cheese, only three ounces in the entire recipe, and then three ounces of Parmesan cheese. Because I know for your patients, you had them limit dairy to how many ounces per day? Well, so at the beginning, yeah, it's not much. Yeah. It's more like four ounces of cheese and a couple of tablespoons of cream. Right, and so there's six yeah. ounces of cheese in this entire recipe. Okay. So if I had one of these servings, I'm probably okay, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I like that. All right, if you want to put sauce on oh, there. Well, you're not um, going to make it? <laughs> well, I can make one, you can make one. Okay. You All just right. put Deal. tomato sauce. Now, tomato sauce you want to be careful with because tomatoes are carby, right? Um, yeah. So I put a lot on, for me, I put a lot on that one. Um, but that is a, a just tomato sauce without a lot of seasoning or anything, so it's pretty plain. I'm going to put... Um, okay, I'm gonna you put, first. 
I'm gonna put the sausage on there. And you know what, I may just use my fingers. Ooh, okay. another trick that you can do is like put the sauce and then put some mozzarella cheese and then put the toppings and then oh, put more mozzarella okay. cheese and now put the toppings just like the other. Good. Yeah. Now this is dinner, right? This is dinner. <laughs> this is dinner. Okay, or breakfast. How about this one, we'll do uh, pepperoni. Oh yeah, I got pepperoni. Put a little onion, do you mind if I do a little onion? I love onions. Okay. And we'll have to put this in the oven. Once we get all the toppings on, we'll put it back in the oven at 350. And, ooh, mushrooms. I'm just kind of mm -hmm. throwing these on. Do you want pepper or bacon? Absolutely. Do you want broccoli? I'm gonna pass on the broccoli. <laughs> I think I will too. Who put that in there? If it was the white sauce, maybe. Maybe. Okay, and what do we do? Oh, pepperoni. You know, the pepperoni, I don't know if you realize this, but often you should put the pepperoni on first because it'll burn, like unless you cover it with a ton of cheese. So if you oh. put it on, because <laughs> it does, it tends to, it's, I guess it's fatty and it's thin, mm -hmm. but it tends to burn. So I should have put it sooner. Um, wow, these look really good. We're loading them up with all these toppings. You know, I love fresh spinach too. So we could have put spinach, goat cheese. Like there's so many things that you can do on these. More bacon, right? Did you get of bacon? Of course, never enough bacon. <laughs> but um, now, I know you're also uh, always, always interested in minimizing cleanup. Yes, all that. Are absolutely. Are you thinking about that here somewhere? Um, well, you know, <laughs> it's not actually not so bad. What I love about the crust um, is that you make it in one bowl. And so it's one bowl, and it is easier if you're just doing one large crust than doing the four. But this is also nice like for kids' lunches or like to put it in the freezer, pull it out, make a quick lunch. So I also like quick. And so if you mm -hmm. spend that time meal prepping and then you have something fast, I think we're done if we just sprinkle, oh, sprinkle cheese over cheese. top. You can always use a little more cheese. More cheese over top. I don't um, want to, but I got to be careful of my ounces, right? My limit, my guideline. Right. Well, so, especially at first. Especially at first. And you know, something that works well, I'm going to put some black olives on this one. Um, Something that works well too with cheese is to put a little Parmesan cheese. So you put mozzarella and put a little bit of Parmesan. Parmesan has such a strong flavor that you use less of it. And so that's another kind of tip. If you wanted to really minimize the dairy, put um, use Parmesan or mix of mozzarella and Parmesan because mozzarella gives it that creamy, gooey, cheesy feel. But Parmesan gives you a, like a huge amount of flavor, packs a real punch of flavor. Ooh. I'm getting hungry. How long is this going to take again? <laughs> well, we piled these pretty high, but maybe <laughs> they'll be ready in, I don't know, 10 to 12 minutes. We could Fantastic. pick something to drink and um, get ready to eat. Okay, so you can take this to the oven. Okay, I will. Back careful to the there. oven. Yeah, careful there. Ouch. <laughs> You may wonder why I'm here. I'm actually just down the street here in North Carolina and Christy invited me over for dinner. Thank you so much. Do you mind if I have oh, some Oh, please, tea? help yourself. Unsweet uh, tea. Un of course. Well, that's right, in the, in the South, if it's tea, it's got sugar in it. So you wanna make sure that it's unsweet tea here in the South. But um, that smells fantastic. Thank you. Well, cheers. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Do you have a preference? Well, can we have a little bit of each one? <laughs> <laughs> this one has a lot of cheese. Let's try yeah, that let's one. Try that one first. Okay, now these are hot just out of the okay. oven. And you know, we can cut several of these. I don't even remember what's on some of them. So let me grab this. This has black olives. Do you like black olives? I do. Okay, yeah. let's grab that one. Um, so you want me to cut this? I, I don't know. That, that. <laughs> Are you nervous about cutting it? Remember, I'm not a surgeon. That's I'm right. That's right. You're not a surgeon. Do you want me to do it? Medical doctor, please. Okay. <laughs> okay. And I hope. And you're a doctor too, I understand. I am a PhD. You know what my children say? Yeah. They say yeah. her mom's a doctor, but she's not the kind who can help people. Oh, that's <laughs> not true at all. <laughs> Look how you're helping people. The irony, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, so now it's going to be really hot, but okay. one of the things I really love about this crust is that it's sturdy. So notice I didn't get knives and forks. 
it's not a knife and fork pizza. It's not a it's knife a and fork pizza. pizza. And that's rare with um, yeah. low carb pizzas. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to tear it up. Okay. Man, this one is really piled with the toppings. I think I did this one. I get a little excited doing toppings. That smells great. Ooh. Oh, do you hear the crunch? I do. That's exciting too, because crisp is also really hard to accomplish. So, what do you think? You think we can try it? I think so. Let's try it. <laughs> now, Dr. Russell was telling you he's just up the road in Durham, North Carolina, and it was actually his plan in the back of Gary Taub's oh. book that I followed. It's hot. Be careful. Um, and so it's been really an honor to kind of work with him in various kind of capacities because it was his plan I followed um, to lose my weight and really change my life. And I well, appreciate you doing that. Thank you for the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> if he likes this, he may be coming down the road a lot, right? Let's see. It's hot, please be careful. I'm yeah. worried you're gonna get burned. See the steam coming off this? Yeah. Maybe we should wait just a minute. It smells great. <laughs> this one has the pepperoni, some onion, some mushroom. Mmm. What do you think? Is it good? Wow. Look at that. It's like a bread-like texture, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you really like it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to make a deep dish pizza, and this was like my fail for the deep dish, but I think it's a pretty decent crust. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Try it in. Mm. Crunchy, mm, delicious. Crunchy. Um, a lot of oil, which is fine, remember? <laughs> I mean, I That's don't great. need to take a paper towel and dab the fat. This really reminds me, with the sausage and the pepperoni, it really reminds me the Pizza Hut pizza. I don't know. What about, do you remember those? Mm -mm. You don't remember that? <laughs> it's been so long since I had one of those. But, it's been uh, over four and a half years for me. But, I mean, is it a, a good thing to say that it's as good as store-bought pizza? No, mm -hmm. I don't think so. No. This is better. <laughs> this is better. And you know, it's homemade. And it's all real ingredients, it's real food. Um, and it just, you can't beat it. it once you get used to it, um, it really is best off in the homemade pizza that you make yourself. I'm so glad that you came down to try pizza with me. My pleasure. Now, can I finish this, please? You can finish that. <laughs> I hope if you make this recipe for your family that they enjoy it as much as we do.